Hi, so today I'm going to explain to you how to set the intonation on my uh, Gibson Les Paul here. Now, the first thing you do, make sure that your neck um, has got the right tension on it. And you can adjust that by adjusting the truss rod that sits just beneath this little plate here. It has three little screws. And if you lift that, now if you're looking at the guitar from the, the head position, just remember, rightly, tightly makes the truss rod bow the neck and left releases the tension. You need a slight bow. So when you um, adjust the truss rod, um, there needs to be a slight, um, what they call neck relief, distance between the string and the neck. And um, if you can look up on the Gibson website what the measurements should be at the various frets. You shouldn't have any buzzing. Um, that's based on your string heights. But now get back to the intonation. Intonation means that when you play an open ear, and you're using electronic tuner here to test these, don't use your ear for this, because uh, you want it absolutely precise within micro measurements. You get your, um, you start with the high strings, because there's more tension on these tight uh, strings. It puts more tension on the neck, it, it twists the neck. It can twist like that, it can bow, or it can twist it sideways. Just, just bear that in mind when you set the intonation. So here we go. So firstly, you get all the strings, you get the guitar in, into standard tuning. And then once, once you've done that, you test this high E string here at the 12th fret. And make sure that on your electronic tuner, that it's also ringing true. Now, the relevance is from the nut, which is this white piece of uh, plastic or ivory, whatever your guitar's got, it's called the nut. From that nut to the 12th fret is a certain distance in millimeters. And from that 12th fret to the bridge here is equidistance. And therefore, when the string oscillates, when fretted there, it should give you an octave higher of an open E string. You can hear this with the ear, it sounds more or less right. Now, when it's not equidistance, you need to make adjustments. Now, remember, we've discussed that your neck relief is, is slightly bowed and, and uh, all the notes along the fretboard are ringing true. But when you get up to this 12th fret, it's not. Let's assume it's showing on your electronic tuner as being high, high in pitch. In other words, it would uh, reflect as a, on my tuner, it reflects as a yellow color. Um, Blue is perfectly in tune, red is um, too low in, in tone or tune, and, um, and yellow is too high. That, that's what we call sharp or high, and that's low. That's what it should sound like, okay? If your guitar is ringing like that, it means that the distance from the 12th fret to the bridge is too short. You can adjust that distance, this is what you call intonation, by moving the saddle by turning that little screw at the back there. And they use the appropriate screwdriver, not one that big. <laughs> okay, when you turn clockwise, clockwise, from left to right, that's clockwise with your screwdriver inserted in that little screw there, you're going to find that that bridge saddle will move. When you turn clockwise, it's going to move backwards. It, you're going to increase the length from that saddle to the 12th fret. And therefore, what's going to happen when you've got a longer distance, it's going to go flatter. So you need to actually turn it anti-clockwise. When you turn it anti-clockwise, that little saddle is going to move forward and shorten the distance from the 12th fret to the saddle. That will raise your pitch. Now we had a guitar that was ringing. Let's say it was ringing on the 12th fret. It sounded like it was E flat. Well, that's what your electronic tuner tells you. You then turn it anti-clockwise to sharpen it because you, by turning anti-clockwise, you're gonna shorten the distance from the 12th fret to the thing. Excuse me, you do each string individually until they all ring true. Remember, they all rang true, E, B, G, D, A, E. And when you fret them at the 12th fret, they're in perfect tune. 
something about a Gibson Les Paul especially when you get I found that when you get to the third fret now you test each note E F F sharp or G flat and G I found for 20 years I owned this guitar and it was not ringing true even though I'd sent it to professionals at the third fret and I finally figured out what the problem was the problem was that my neck relief was not quite right because now we're looking at the distance from that G string up to the bridge saddle up here when that note was ringing flat which told me I needed to shorten that distance and you know what I was in perfect intonation at my 12th or 14th fret for that matter but I had a problem here which really affected this tone of my D chords on a Gibson Les Paul I'm not promising you the guitars 100% in tune because I just took it out the case now I haven't used it for a few days okay so what I did was I figured out that the neck relief had an issue Remember, the guitar is in perfect intonation at the 12th fret and open string. It rang perfect, but the G note was flat. Well, what I needed to do, as I said earlier, I needed to bend the neck backwards. Remember, rightly, tightly. So I turn from when well, I'm facing the guitar this way, I turn my Allen key because the Allen key fits in there as supplied by the manufacturer. Fits in there. You turn it to the right rightly tightly and it will tighten the neck and it will it will pull it back this way thereby increasing that distance from an open string to the g note and guess what <laughs> you guessed it perfect intonation that ring note rings true as a g there it rings true as an e there on the 12th fret and it rings true and honestly to take this on board because for 20 years as i said i played like that and that sounded awful when i played an open d chord or an open a chord i could hear you know i've been playing guitar for up to 50 years since i started and i can hear it's wrong but i didn't know what to do about it and i hope you benefit from this video and thanks for subscribing to my channel where i have lots of jams and cover jams and and little training lessons and anything about gear and equipment and music appreciate it thank you